Hey everyone, I'm Robin and this is BitBirdie. Today, I'm going to show you how to create a generator for these bullet hell attack patterns in Godot Engine. All right, I've created a brand new project and I've also created my main scene, which has nothing in it at the moment. So let's create a scene for the bullet. We'll give it a sprite. Assign it the icon. And we're just going to change the scale of this so that it's the size of a bullet. And we'll give it a script. Okay, so this bullet is going to be super simple for the purposes of this tutorial. All it's going to do is move forward. We're also going to give it a timer. So what this timer will do, call it kill timer, is destroy the bullet after a certain amount of time. You probably won't do this in your project. I'm just doing it in mine so that bullets don't eat up my memory as I run the tutorial. Get that 10 seconds. And there we go. That's our bullet. All right, let's go and make an enemy scene. Let's also give this guy a sprite. Good old icon.png again. And we'll make this one a lot bigger than the bullet. We're also going to give it a timer. We'll call it shoot timer. This timer is basically the amount of time between bullets. So we'll see what that means when I get to the code. We also want to give it a another node 2D, and we'll call this the rotator, which will also become clear. So what we're going to do is spawn a bunch of bullet spawn points as children of the rotator. We'll have them spawn equal distance in a circle around the rotator. When the enemy is attacking, we'll have the rotator rotate at a speed that you can set, and the bullets will shoot out of their spawn points and you'll be able to set the number of spawn points as well. So let's see what that looks like in code. We'll give this guy a script. Ooh. Oh, not the rotator, the enemy. Okay, so let's put in the parameters that you'll be able to adjust to create different patterns. You have the rotate speed, we'll set that to 100. The shoot timer wait time. That's the wait time for this timer. We're gonna put it in code so that we can easily change it. The spawn point count. So that'll be the, the number of spawn points that bullets will come out of. And the radius. So this is the radius of the circle we're going to make around the rotator. Okay, so let's set up this rotator with its spawn points. So we're going to have a variable called step. This is going to be... This is going to be the difference in angle between the points on the circle. So if we had a circle, this distance is the radius, and say we have four spawn points, that means that they would be equally laid out like this. And the distance between them, the angle between them, will, would be 90 degrees, or pi over 2. And that's our step. Okay, now let's actually create the spawn points. It's going to be a node 2D. And this is how we're going to get the position of the spawn point. Okay, so what's going on here? On the first iteration of the loop, i will be zero. We're gonna create a vector two where x is the radius and y is zero. So that's what the vector would look like. Now for the first iteration, i is gonna be zero, so it's not going to be rotated at all. But on the second iteration, i will be one, and we'll want to rotate it by step times one. And step, we already figured out, is 90 degrees, or pi over two, so it's gonna go right over here. Okay, we're gonna give the spawn point that position. And we're also going to change its rotation to 
pause.angle. So we want the spawn point to be rotated as well according to the position because the bullet just goes forward, right? Transform.x times speed.delta. So it doesn't know which direction it's going. It's just going in whatever direction you will put it. Okay, let's get the rest of our variables. So we need the bullet scene. Oh, it's red because we haven't saved everything. Let's go here and save that. Save our main scene. Save our enemy, why not? And get the rest of the objects in the enemy. Okay, so now we need to initialize the shoot timer. So we just set its wait time to this. And then just start it. So when we run the scene, the enemy will just start shooting. And every 0.2 seconds, a bullet will come out of each bullet spawn point. Let's actually just hook up that signal right now. All right, so when it's time to shoot, we wanna get all the children in the rotator. Actually, we forgot to add the spawn point as child. So, spawn point. So each of the spawn points need to be children of the rotator so that when the rotator rotates, the spawn points will go with it. Okay, so for each spawn point in the rotator, when we shoot, we want to instance a bullet. And then we want to add the bullet to the root. And then we'll set the bullet's position and rotation to match the spawn points. Okay, so now a bullet that spawns here will not be rotated at all and it'll just go forward. A bullet that spawns here will be rotated 90 degrees because that's what this position dot angle will result in and so on. All right, now the only thing that's missing is rotating the rotator. So let's put process here. We'll get the new rotation. We're using rotation degrees here. Rotate speed is in rotation degrees and rotation degrees here because it gives us more room to work with. It's a lot easier to fine tune between zero and 360 degrees than it is between zero and two pi. Okay, now let's actually rotate it. Rotation degrees. The F mod will make sure that the rotation doesn't go above 360. If you don't want to use F mod, it's probably fine. You probably won't reach an integer overflow with the rotation, but I like having it here just to be safe. Now let's see what it looks like. Oh, the main scene. Looks like nothing because we haven't added the enemy to the main scene yet. So let's just put him there. We'll move him to the middle here. Cool. If the whole rotator thing is a little bit confusing, a better way to visualize it would be to make this a sprite. And we can give it its own little icon.png. See, so what's really happening here is the rotator is rotating and all its bullet spawn points will rotate with it, spawning bullets as it goes. So feel free to tweak these numbers as you see fit. I'll show you a few examples, including the numbers, so that you have something to work off of. I hope this tutorial was helpful to some of you. If you like this video, you might want to check out my devlogs where you'll be able to follow me on my own journey to bullet hell greatness. Also don't forget to leave a comment, like, and subscribe. See you next time.